Making bead bracelets is always good stuff. Here's another design just for you, the sunflower cuff. The sunflower cuff is another simple bead design that looks fine with flowers all around, green beads in between that look like vines. With a unique look and a bit of flair, this is one you'll definitely want to wear and share. This design is great, of course, it's fast fun and easy to make. So get ready for this tutorial to satisfy your creative needs. Feel free to give this video a like. Enjoy this episode of Turbo Beats. Here's a list of everything you need to make the bead sunflower cup. Before starting this project, I'm just letting you know that I'm using Omniflex 15 pound high strength fishing line. It's a transparent string that comes in a 500 yard spool and works great with peyote stitch designs. It's high in strength and low in price. With that being said, I'm just keeping you informed, letting you know this is a personal choice, not a sponsor video. Making the sunflower cuff is simple. First thing we'll need to do is to take one foot of fishing line and we're going to create the flowers. What you'll do is you'll match up the ends, then you're going to add a yellow bead on each end of the strings. You're going to let those fall to the bottom. Then you're going to take a black bead and you're going to put that on both strings, just as you see here. Once you have that black bead on the string, you'll let that bead run to the bottom. Then we're going to take two yellow beads once again, we'll add one yellow bead to one end of the string and a yellow yellow bead to the other. Once you have those beads on the string, let those run to the bottom. Push those beads in a tight formation toward the center of the string. From here, you'll tie both ends of the string together with a knot, keeping all of those beads locked into place, also keeping those in a tight formation. When tying your string together, be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure, ensuring that everything stays locked into place and holds together. With this visual, you will see that tying the string and the knot is as easy as it seems. Once your string is tied and those beads are locked into place, this is what it should look like so far. From here, you'll see that we'll have two ends of string to use. What we'll do is take one end of the string and run it back through the closest bead here on the top row, which is this yellow bead. Once you get that string through that bead, we're ready to add the bead to this flower. Go ahead and take one yellow bead and add it to the string. Now that we have that bead on the string, we're going to run that string through the next bead on that row, which is this yellow bead here on the end. Watch close as I guide the string to that bead, pulling it all the way through until that bead fits right into place, filling in the gap. Then from here, we're going to flip this over using the other end of string that we haven't used yet, running it through the closest bead here on the end, pull that string all the way through. Now that we have that string to that bead, we're ready to add the next bead to that string. Go ahead and add one yellow bead to the string. Once you get that bead on the string, you're going to run that string to the bead here on the end. Once you get that string to that bead, and pull it all the way through, that bead that was added will fill in the gap, locking right into place. From here, you'll have both ends of strings on the same side of the pattern. What you'll do is you'll tie both ends of string together with a knot, locking all of those beads into place. When tying your string together, be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure to ensure that everything stays locked into place and holds together. With that knot tied and all those beads locked into place, you'll carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string. As you can see, from here we've created a bead flower. This is exactly what it should look like. From here, what you'll need to do is create six more of these, giving us a total of seven bead flowers. Like I've mentioned before, you can see that I've created the seven bead flowers all identical for this bracelet, which will all be added to the string. But once you've created enough of these bead flowers, you're ready for the next steps. On this next step, we'll be using the straw technique, which will cut the straw down the center, making it easier to add beads to that straw. So just continue watching as I carefully cut the straw in half. Cutting the straw down the center will make it easier to add beads to that straw. Basically, what we're using is using the straw as a stabilizer for the rows of beads, keeping them straight, aligned, and in place. Once you have that straw cut down the center, what we're going to do is add three green beads to that straw. Once you have those beads on that straw, you're going to carefully cut off the end of the straw, keeping it from showing through the sides. As you'll see, that straw will be hidden within those beads, keeping those beads straight, aligned, and in place. With this visual, you will see this is exactly how it should look. 
These three beads will act as a spacer that will go in between each of the flowers once added to the string. Again, what you'll need to do is create a total of 14 of these green spacers. You'll add three green beads on that straw, carefully cut off the end of the straw, keeping it from showing through the sides, and you'll have a green spacer. So once you've created enough of these green spacers, you're ready for the next steps, which all of these will be added to the string. Before moving on to the next step, I'm just letting you know that I'm using Dritz Elastic Cord. It's an elastic string that works great with bead projects and other things. Definitely a product you won't want to disregard. It comes in a package with 5 yards. This string is strong, nice, and comes in a low price. With that being said, I'm just keeping you informed, letting you know this is a personal choice, not a sponsored video. From this point, we'll start out by using 1.5 feet of elastic stretch string, which we'll add those beads to. You will see that this step when adding the beads to the string should be pretty straightforward and simple. When you lay the string out, ensure that you have secured the other end of the string so that your beads don't fall off the other end. Start out by taking one end of the string and adding that bead flower to the string by going through the top bead on that flower. Once you get that bead flower on that string, push that bead toward the end of that string. With that bead flower on the string, we'll now take one of the spacers and add them to that string as well. Again, once you get those beads on that string, you'll push those beads toward the end, meeting up with those other beads. Once again, we'll add another bead flower to that string through the top bead of that flower. Once you get that bead flower on that string, you'll push it toward the end of the string, meeting up with the other beads. Once again, once we've added a bead flower to that string, we'll add a bead spacer to the string as well, getting that bead spacer on the string, pushing it toward the end, meeting up with the other beads. With this visual, you should be able to see the pattern that we're using to create this bracelet. Simple steps of adding bead flowers to the string, followed by a bead spacer in between each flower. I'm going to go ahead and let this step play out a little bit so that you can clearly see the pattern I've used to assemble this bracelet. Continue adding these beads to the string until you have all 7 bead flowers on that string with 7 spacer beads on that string as well. This is what it should look like so far. As I've said before, we have seven bead flowers on the string with a spacer in between each flower. Once we have this portion all set, we're ready for the next step. For this next step, once again, we're gonna take one and a half feet of elastic stretch string, which will be running the string through the bottom half of this bracelet. Start out by taking one end of the string, going through the bottom bead of the first flower on the end. As you can see here, once you get that string to that bead, be sure that the string is secured on the end so that the string doesn't slip through the beads and can maintain on that string. Now that your string is all set and secure, you're ready to add a bead spacer on that string. Once you get that bead spacer on that string, go ahead and push that bead toward the end of the string, meeting up with the other beads. Then you'll take that string and run it to the bottom bead of this next bead flower. Continue watching as I guide the string through that bead, pulling that string all the way through. With that string all the way through that flower bead, we're ready to add the next bead spacer to that string. Go ahead, add that bead spacer to the string, run that string to the next bead flower through that bottom bead. Get that string through that bead, pull it all the way through, and that bead spacer will fit right into place, as you can see it here. Continue repeating the same steps, adding spacers in between each bead flower. Again, you'll add your bead spacer to the string, then running that string to the bottom bead of the next bead flower, pulling that string all the way through, keeping those beads in a tight formation. Once again, with this visual, you will see that this section consists of the same steps. Once again, you'll have that string through the bottom of each bead flower, and you'll add a spacer in between each flower. Be sure to pull that string just enough, keeping those beads in a tight formation. You'll continue repeating these same steps until you have a bead spacer in between each flower with all of those spacers on the string. Once you have all of the beads on the string, this is exactly what it should look like. From here, we'll need to bring each side together. We'll take the strings from each end from the top row and tie them together with a knot. When tying your knot, you will see that the two ends will come together. When tying your string together, be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure to ensure all of those beads stay locked into place and hold together. Also, let me be sure to mention when tying your string together that there's enough tension in the string to ensure the bracelet is secure, fit, and more comfortable when worn. 
Once you've tied off the top ends of strings, this is what it should look like. Now we'll take the bottom ends of strings and we'll tie those together as well. Continue watching as I tie the string together with a knot that's solid and secure, ensuring that everything stays locked into place and holds together. As I've mentioned before, ensure that that knot is tied nice and secure with enough tension in the string ensuring the bracelet is fit and comfortable to wear. When your knots are tied and everything locked into place, you'll carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string and your sunflower bracelet is now complete. And there you have it, another divine bead bracelet design that looks fine and was fun to make. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and you can create one just as great. If there's anything you would like to add, requests or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you are new or you just haven't already, don't forget that you can always subscribe if you want to be notified for more bead tutorials just like this one. Hoping you'll tune in for the next one to satisfy your creative needs. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching Turbo Beads.